July 11, 2013. Email from Kalai to Ross Greenberg. Dear Mr. Greenberg, I read that you intend to make a documentary of the first four African-American football players in the post-World War II era who had integrated the National Football Leagues. Among those four was my father, Woody Strode. I also read that your spin on Paul Brown and Dan Reeves will be to honor them for their courage in integrating the game. It is my hope that you do not heroize Dan Reeves. He was a stumbling block to my father from the beginning. He didn't want to induct Kenny Washington into the Rams, but was forced to by the Coliseum Committee. And it was Kenny who pressured Dan Reeves into taking my father. My father had been married out of his race to a full-blood Hawaiian entertainer, my mother, Princess Luana Kalaialoa, and Dan Reeves greatly resented this. When he failed at convincing Kenny to drop his request for my father, he sat my father on the bench the first season without letting him catch one pass. He was an end, a position he played since Jefferson High School. One night in a bar in Hollywood owned by the Mafia, it should be remembered that Kenny was raised among Italians, and he and Woody had many admirers in the Mafia. My father was told that Dan Reeves was falling down drunk and was bragging that he was going to put my father on defense and get him injured in order to get rid of him. The Mafia asked my father if he wanted Dan Reeves given an attitude correction, but my father declined. He was switched to defense, but still was able to shine in that position. For more info on this, you can read my father's biography, Gold Dust, or my screenplay, Washington to Strode. My father was cut from the Rams after the next season's benefit game. So Dan Reeves is not a hero to the Strode family. When Dan Reeves died, my father was asked not to attend his funeral. Such was Dan Reeves' bigotry. If you put him in any other light, it will be a disservice to the truth. July 11, 2013. Email from Ross Greenberg to Kalai. Kalai, thank you so much for emailing me, and now we need to tell the truth. So you need to give me all your contact numbers so we can do exactly that. Everything you wrote is fascinating, and we need the definitive interview with you and whoever else in the family you feel we need to tell the story. You have all my information below. Please send yours so we can get started. By the way, Fritz Pollard also was instrumental in getting the NFL reintegrated, wasn't he? I know once he was blacklisted, he lived to get blacks back into the NFL. I did know the story of the Coliseum and the commission pressuring the Rams given their status as a public facility paid for by taxpayers, right? Let's go, Kalai. Can't wait to start working with you. So, there's my computer. I am now in the room, room 203 at the Lang Langham Hotel. It used to be at the Ritz-Carlton. Here's a little view of the room. July 11, 2013. Email from Kalai to Ross Greenberg. Hi, Mr. Greenberg. Before we begin probing into this niche history and untold story, I'm leaving links to various presentations I've created with my wife on YouTube, some of which covers this. I'd like you to take the time to check them out. Each one is less than 10 minutes in length. Part 1, Football Heroes. Part 2, Lest We Forget. The Football Years, UCLA vs. USC. 1946, Hallie Harding's speech. 1930 to 1934, Jeff High. Part 5, The Actor is Born. Here's my phone number, and there's no one else in my family except myself who still remembers the stories my father told me. His book, Gold Dust, is on Kindle Reader and downloadable for about $10 with many photos of his UCLA and Rams days. His Rams experience was not one he was fond of remembering. And he said that, if they told me I had to integrate heaven, I wouldn't go. His redemption was after he was cut from the Rams. Les Lear, who was a center on the Cleveland Rams team, and knew my father, called him up to Canada to play for the Stampeders. Les was the new coach, and they won the Grey Cup, undefeated in 1948. It was the highlight of my father's football career, and the end of it when he separated his shoulder the next season, which led to his pro wrestling and acting careers. July 11, 2013. Email from Ross Greenberg to Kalai. Thanks, Kalai. I will look at all of this, and thanks for all of this info. Your input will be instrumental in telling this story. Looking forward. July 11, 
2013. Email from Ross Greenberg to Kalai. Just watch them all and can't wait to meet you and start the ball rolling. Truly inspirational. And I want to make you and your family very proud. This will be a wonderful journey and we will have a celebration at the screening. And I promise the true story will be told. It is the only way I know how. July 11, 2013. Email from Kalai to Ross Greenberg. Fair enough. I'm at your disposal, Kalai. July 16, 2013. Email from Ross Greenberg to Kalai. Kalai, can I have your phone number again? Would love to touch base by phone if you are free today. And give me a time that is good for you. I am in New York. July 17, 2013. Email from Kalai to Ross Greenberg. Hi, Mr. Greenberg. Here's my phone number. You can call me anytime. I'm in North Dakota, so the time difference between me and New York is one hour earlier. If you're in L.A., I'm two hours ahead. July 17, 2013. Email from Ross Greenberg to Kalai. I am in New York, so I will try and touch base today or tomorrow. Thanks. July 17, 2013. Email from Kalai to Ross Greenberg. My father's own words. Hi, Mr. Greenberg. I was thinking that you might like to hear my father's own words about his experience with the Rams. So I'm attaching a PDF file from his biography, Gold Dust. I don't know how you will approach this story. I suppose the standard documentary style will do where some archival footage, some photographs, some testimonies from survivors and witnesses, and a charismatic narration by a Morgan Freeman voice will do, and will probably fit into the budget. However, so much of the story can play out in recreations with actors playing the pivotal roles. Of course, that would probably break the budget but would be effective. Example, the Halley Harding speech, etc. Just for your info, I could find no document of the speech, only the character of it as noted by some witnesses, the general outline of it. So the speech, which you heard in my YouTube presentation, was my own creation of it. Hope your progress is going smoothly. July 18, 2013. Email from Ross Greenberg to Kalai. Fascinating stuff, Kalai. I have meetings this morning, but will try to reach you this afternoon. Recreations could be tough, as you know, budget-wise. But have you seen Searching for Sugarman? I would like to treat some of the footage we shoot at UCLA and in LA elsewhere, and in that way, to give the historic moments more texture. Hopefully with the same impact as Recreations, but without the actors. Also, may hire a couple of narrators so the Harding speech stands separate from other stories. I have done this with many of my documentaries. Looking forward to talking to you. July 20, 2013. Email from Kalai to Ross Greenberg. Hi, Mr. Greenberg. I touched base with Kenny Washington's daughter today and gave her your info. She's on board. July 20, 2013. Email from Ross Greenberg to Kalai. Great news. Thanks. So I'm walking here with Gretchen Atwood. Hey! She wrote one of the first uh, articles in the LA Weekly about my dad and the discrimination that they felt uh, before they integrated the National Football League. <coughs> and over here, Malia Willis. She is a publicist for uh, Epics, which is a sports channel. Here's the UCLA Broadcast Center, where I suppose we're going to have the interviews. But everybody wants to talk about the SEC, and the other major conferences in college football, ducking each other. And here's Karen here.
to the breakfast theater. Thank you.